Um, I'm going to become a shoe guy. You guys ever seen the movie Grandma's Boy? No. Mm -hmm. Good. Yesterday when I was drinking disgust, the tea. I won't lie to you. I had a moment of disgust. It's kind of... And like, the longer I think about it, the more I'm like, eh. Disgust? How much money would you be willing to spend on a mug? A mug? A mug. Oh, yeah. So, like... What? Can What's, we... like, your mm. upper limit? What's the reasonable upper limit? I think the reasonable upper limit is gonna be, like, ten bucks right if if it's a handmade mug i'd be willing to spend more but assuming i'm just like going to like spirit halloween and buying a uh friday the 13th mug it, my limit is going to be about 10.99 how big is a mug in this in this metaphor because like i've seen I things that were called mugs, mugs that were okay that's that's what i was thinking like i'm thinking i'm thinking of things that were definitely like closer to tankards than mugs hey mine is not closer to a tankard the one in question is 10 ounces that okay, is so that's small. That's a, that's a, okay. That's a, that's a small mug. That's a small mug. That's an average size mm -hmm. to small size yeah. mug. Yeah. What's the upper limit? Like I'm bucks. I'm Absol so absolutely. afraid of what you're about to say that it costs. <laughs> but I'm gonna say for that what's mug. What's the what's the not for Noah but like for the human reasonable upper limit? Seven dollars, maybe. Right. Yeah, it's the human reasonable upper limit. Yeah, I think that's I think that's pr for, for like, like for just seven a mug? for a mug. I mean, what if it's what if it's more than just a mug? Oh my okay, God, so just, if it's more I than did, just a mistake. mug, then I'm going to say that my upper limit goes up to like twelve dollars. Right. Oh, but like, God, dude, I am fucked. I'm fucked. Oh, my God. I'm looking Jackson, at how much on now. I'm fucked. Jackson, how much did you spend on this mug? I bought Jackson. a hundred dollar mug. What the fuck? <laughs> my Jackson I got on sale. It was on sale. Okay. And oh. I didn't actually pay out of pocket for it. I used like Best Buy rewards points for no. it. It was a Best Buy mug? Pay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. If so you're buying okay, this stop. Mug. Stop. This if was a free to me. I didn't pay if for this you mug. You are buying a mug from Best Buy. That's not just a mug. That's it's, a it's, it's a collector item just a type mug. of item. What are you talking about? No, collector it, item? What, you, what was it an ember mug? It is an ember mug, yeah. That's a, that's definitely not just a mug. I didn't say it was just a mug. No, it was often just a mug thing. But I was, you know, I said, what if it's a little more than a mug? You wouldn't specify. And Noah said twelve dollars. Well, I didn't want to tell you everything it did. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, for something like this, I'd probably pay like fifty bucks. I don't think I'd pay a hundred. Still a hundred dollars is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's I is thought it, the same thing. Uh, There's definitely a point in my life where I thought it was the dumbest thing ever for people to have, and then like I slowly moved into the camp of like, actually, it seems pretty cool, and then slowly into the camp of I kind of want one. And then over the course of like two years, uh, I finally saw it go on sale the other day. And I was like, you know what? I've never seen it go on sale before. It's been on my watch list for like two years. I'll buy it. I, I like had enough rewards points to get it for like uh, no out of pocket money. You know what? Okay. Looking How into this mug for What's like 10 seconds. Of an mug? Uh, 14 ounces. It's so small. Yeah, the biggest one's 14, but that's 130 and it wasn't on sale. So because I was thinking like. I don't know. I don't drink enough hot drinks, I guess, for it to be like directed towards me. But it, I, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. Like I think it's a neat thing. I, I usually drink at least two mugs of hot drinks a day. That's fair. Uh, but typically, the, the the size is the biggest thing because I usually drink like a sixteen ounce mug, and mm -hmm. so like a ten ounce mug is like small. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is annoying, but also the heat retention is one of the best things about a sixteen ounce mug. Mm -hmm. I get that. Outside of just the volume, the heat retention is pretty nice. Um. But I gotta say, this shit fucks. I buy it. I buy it. I like. I was like, this is the dumbest mug ever. People who buy this suck. Um, and it's really cool. I uh, it's it's really fun to have like a a beverage stay not hot in the way like a thermos keeps it like really really hot, but like just at the same drinking temperature without dropping or like yeah. moving for like as long as you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's got a little app that like it even gives you like a little notification when it's at the right temperature, which that I think is a little extra. I don't really, you know. Yeah, no, uh, that was. I think more of just the. But. But it's like, uh, yeah, if you got the app, you might as well make it do something. But the app also like you can control like the temperature and stuff. Yeah, I have my. I mean, in terms of useless apps, I have my air fryer hooked up to my to an app, and that's literally the most useless thing. I mean, yeah, I am definitely like a, a smart things hater. Like, don't equip anything to my phone or to me. Unless you absolutely have to, but like, um, and don't get me wrong, the mug is not changing my mind on that. Mm -hmm. I think that it is superior to normal mugs in a lot of ways, but it is not marginally so. 
and there is like I'm still not going to use it for everything. Well, for now I am because I paid money for it, or well because it costs a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it's pretty sick. It's really nice to be like editing on something or like playing a game, and like have a drink there, and then like it doesn't matter if like you get in like an intense part of the game or like you can't. You know, you're like working really hard and you kind of like zone out. It's still the same temperature like hours later. That That is nice. I do. It's does it only do it is also cool. What does it only keep things hot or will it also keep things cool? That's that's my question. Um, I don't think it keeps things cool because it's like a, a mug. I think there, there's like a travel version of it, which probably works as like more of like a thermos that keeps things cool, too. But like, I don't I don't know. The mug is just for hot things, though. It says between yeah. 120 and 145. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I mean, and I, I guess it like there probably are things that keep your stuff cool, but it's a lot easier to keep something cold than it is to keep something at a reasonable drinking temperature. I mm-hmm. no no I I agreed because not, like not on like a technical I, level. Well, like on a, kind of kind no, of because keeping any something thermo- hot insulation keep something cold you literally have to like it, like lo- like equivalent exchange you have to make heat that goes elsewhere whereas to keep something hot just you can do that with like a simple electronic fucking uh loop like well yes and no it depends on the way you keep things hot because if you do it like that you're just gonna like basically be putting it on a burner and that's not gonna work effectively to keep things in in a in a manner that doesn't make them just burn like a coffee pot that's very fair um whereas cooling things i mean if you get like a thermos like go to the store look at a thermos any thermos you see is going to have like a little sticker on it that says keeps things hot for 12 hours, keeps things cool for 24. That's fair. Like the vacuum insulation just is better for the for cold, thing. cold that's retention that's than heat retention. You just sap less. Yeah, that I was going to say um, that that was all I was going to add to the conversation. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's like it's not like awful, but kind of I, I guess you could really need that for a cold beverage. But like no one's like, ah, oh, man, my cold stuff always heats up. I am. <laughs> but you that's the thing, faster, like. But- Drink if your, your cold stuff, stuff faster. Always... What? But but it's not no, hot. The less he's hot not stuff there, drinking the hot less stuff. hot stuff there is, the faster it cools off. And he's drinking drinking temperature stuff, it, which is distinctly different than hot. Because I could keep coffee hot in my freaking thermos mug thing, or my like massive water bottle. You know that thing? We'll mm-hmm, keep mm-hmm. it'll keep liquids hot for a very long time. It'll also keep liquids cold for a very long time. It's it's not hard to keep things hot, but it will not keep tea at a good drinking temperature for a very long time. Because, like, you know, if you put something in a thermos, because, like, I usually bring a, a thermos of coffee with me when I do, like, the radio show and stuff. And uh, when I do that, like, as I sip it, it, like, every time I put it in, like, the little cup thing that's on top of the thermos, it comes out and I'm like, yep, this is uh, too hot to drink. And then, you know, I drink it eventually. And by the end, it's a little bit chilly in the bottom. And then I pour uh, another cup out of the thermos. And I'm like, yep, this is too hot to drink. And, you know, you could take the time to, like, juggle when it starts to get too cold. You just keep topping it off and try and keep it at an optimal temp. But, like... But that, that's a lot of monkeying. That, it's not practical. And that's, and that's fine. If you if you want to do that, it's totally fine. It's a way cheaper option. I just thought this is a fun little thing that I am now in possession of. And it's I a, am like, damn. It's a neat thing it, to have on your it's desk. It's way more convenient than I thought. It's, it's a very neat little, like, desk. I'm a huge fan of desk gadgets. It also has like a little like uh, like charging coaster. Yeah, so you that's put it on the, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The bat because battery I charging like, is one thing, but like having it on the little coaster is rad. The charging coaster is really cute, and it looks cute too, and it like matches the color and everything. And there's like a series of colors. Also, there's an LED on it that you can customize to what color you want it to be. Nice. And that's that's a kind of cool, but like, I mean, go on. I'm not gonna lie to you. The more I look into the mug, the more interested I would be in it. <laughs> And yeah, it definitely it's it, pretty cool. I don't know that it justifies like one hundred and thirty dollars for the 14 ounce version. Oh, yeah. No, I, I but wouldn't. I can understand it. it. I I would I could argue that it does justify its existence by far. And I mean, it's the only one that I see that's doing what it's doing. So I guess they get to set their starting price. But I don't know if you could get yeah, it. And, and they do it fairly it well. Sale, there are so. other like temperature regulating mugs that are out there. But like, I just feel like. A lot of other ones probably do kind of like the thing Dan said, where it's just like basically an induction burner on the bottom of it mm-hmm. that you basically just have a coffee pot, which is just going to, you know, give you that that uh, two hours in the coffee pot type stuff. Mm, two hour old coffee. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing about the, the mug is I feel like if you're not if you don't have the ability to make just like a single serve 10 ounces of coffee, it's kind of 
it becomes inconvenient because then like what do you do although i will say that this does scream um the type of innovation for someone who already is taking the time to make themselves like small amounts of things because they care about that type of thing Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it, it, it's really nice i made a latte in it yesterday that was like that was sick as hell Ooh, a perfect temp latte all day yeah oh that's nice uh the t the t fun the t factor is also through the roof oh i can only imagine i think it's i think it's way better for tea than it is for coffee well, i feel like tea is its primary purpose to be honest yeah i mean you put some tea in there and you're like that's sh this just is golden now, Last night I was I was playing some video games, uh, some League of Legends to be specific, which is, you know, a kind of game where you can't like just be like sitting there sipping when it's convenient for you. You, you know, you can't just like, be like, oh, it's perfect drinking temperature. Give me like five minutes to just sip this now. Typically, you're like, oh, man, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on in the game and you can't sip regularly, mm -hmm. consistently. So the temperature is fluctuating. You don't know what to expect. And at the end of the game, the coffee's cold and it kind of sucks. But like I had some tea in there and it was so nice to over the course of like two or three games keep remembering i'm like oh shit i got that there and then taking a sip and be like oh it's nice and hot that, that does nice. sound fantastic now i i got to admit though i am a big fan of tea as it gets colder as well one of my favorite things that tea can ever do is get cold over the course of a day and then i just have a mug of like room temp and slightly colder tea you know is that not uh is I, that not a feeling no, i agree share? i i think I I did kind of I, I agree with you there. It, like I had a moment yesterday of when I was drinking disgust, the tea. I won't lie to you. I had a moment of disgust. It's kind of and like the longer I think about it, the more I'm like, eh. disgust. Well, it was kind I of feel weird like last is night. A law, that, I feel like that's a that's a strong word. I don't like room temperature liquids. Well, then I have some bad news for you about how room temperature works. I do. I do understand that. And hot liquids, especially. I know. I oh wait no never mind dan is of the opinion that the room should just be hotter anyway that is true so so no argument i can make will change his mind there no, no there is like a there's a like i personally i just i find like if i'm gonna have a, if i'm going if you said if you sit me down and you're like you can have a glass of whatever you want you can choose that it's cold or hot or room temperature i cannot think of a single drink that i'd be like i want it to be room temperature I'm a room temperature water all the I way. I respect guy. room temperature water. Uh, that's about the only one I can even understand. I don't. I prefer it nice and cold. I like a, a nice shock to my system. Uh, but I do I don't because understand. I if you put water in front of me, I don't have time to drink a glass of water. That's fair. I have five seconds. It's gone. You can get me more water if you want. I'm going to do it again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you can not. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to sit here with water. What do, what do you think I am, a caveman? If there's water, it's gone or it's not. The water drinking is a binary to me. You either chug it all now or you don't drink water. And I don't know why. I don't think I'm right. This is just who I am. Yeah, no, I'm not. I, I can't side with you on that. I, I really yeah, want I, to. I don't think you have to. But No, I don't think there's anything wrong. I, don't th I, think, it's, 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 I think it's a w bit weird for me. Like, and I don't think that that's how it should be for everyone. I'm not saying that, like, that's what you should do. I don't think that you should do that. I just, for whatever reason, when it comes to water, I either, usually what I do is I walk to the sink, I fill up, like, a pint glass with water, I chug the whole thing, and then I walk back to my desk. Okay. That's odd. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't think that's optimal. I don't even think it's good. It's just what I do. Yeah, that's another reason that I like my big water bottles. I, I keep my coffee cup at my desk. Uh, and I just pour water into that and drink gradually over the course of however much time I'm here for. If I have a big water bottle, I need to clarify. I also just drink it all. <laughs> yeah, no, I I would do that, but I I, I can't. So that's fair. I I, I understand it. I, I'm water. like a, it's too much water. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I understand that. I'm like a dog with food. Like I'll just drink it until I die. I don't know why. <laughs> I just it just it, it just needs to go away. I think it's because for most of my life, people have always been like, you got to drink water. Here's some water. Drink it. And I'm like, fine, fuck it. And so like my reaction when I have water is to just drink it now. Like when I was uh, after I got my covid booster a couple weeks back, uh, you know, I wasn't feeling good the, the that night because, you know, I was running a little bit of a fever, not feeling good. Totally and Mari was over. And she's like, make sure. Yeah. And Mari was like, make sure to drink plenty of water. And then she gave me a glass of water and I just drank it all. And she just. Like, I took it as a challenge, I guess, and went and got me more water. And we did that four times, and I just drank actually, like, over a quart of water. 
in like two minutes, and I didn't feel good. Amazing. It was cool. Yes, and I don't know why. We we just like kept going back and forth. She's like, keep drinking water. Did you guys ever And I drank it like the entire amount of water you're supposed to drink in a day over the course of probably five minutes. Did you ever That's the way drink to drink it, water. Like water first thing in the morning and like like actually like, make yourself sick because of it? Uh no, but there is something I, I love drinking some water first thing in the morning. It makes me feel alive. I I I mean it still happens actually. I can't even say I used to. If I drink like a like like a like a bottle of water like a you know big ass thing of water first thing in the morning it hits my stomach like a rock and i almost hurl every single time oh man dude i think going to the sink and drinking a pint of water is like part of my daily routine it's a good routine to be honest i go to the the watering hole i'm like i got some like gazelle jeans in me or something (laughs) it's like you drink at the watering hole that's where you drink yeah i just bring the watering hole with me i I can't (laughs) i don't get it I couldn't because I would just drink the whole watering hole and then the whole savanna would wither. Damn, I can't believe you're down here trying to wither the whole savanna. I know. I can't. I can't. That I don't know what's wrong with me. It's start of Jackson's villain arc. It's my Joker moment. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah, but I got a mug that sells for a hundred dollars. Yeah, I did. I didn't respect it at first, but I do respect it now. I think it's pretty cool. I, I, I... enjoy it. I respect it as a gadget. Like it's, I, I'm a huge fan of like little little desk gadgets that like add to my aesthetic, and that feels very much like your aesthetic. Yeah, I'm definitely like the guy who drinks a lot of hot beverages. So oh. I think you know it works for you. Having a thing that makes drinking hot beverages far more convenient because typically when I like if we record the podcast earlier in the day, like if we do like a you know 1 p.m. or noon recording, I I usually have like a, a mug of coffee with me, and yeah. typically at the end of the pod- co- podcast, I have half of a mug of cold coffee. I feel like it's harder to drink a lot quickly when we're talking. It is, yeah. You know, because I know that's one of my big issues is that if I have something to drink um, in a cup, I drink that cup very, very quickly. Uh, I do not drink like my entire water bottle quickly, but I will drink whatever pre-portioned convenient cup of water I have as quickly as I possibly can. Um, So I try not to... I try to do that delicate balance of having a drink around while recording so that I don't like dry out, but I also, you know, don't have to leave halfway through because I've consumed half a gallon of water. Yeah, I usually just well, actually, I've uh, I've cut energy drinks out of my diet uh, as much as possible now. New Year's so resolution or just uh, something that you've been trying for a little bit? My doctor told me that I have a, what can only be described as medically diagnosed beer belly. From the amount of fake sugars that I drink. That's fine. And carbs from various energy drinks and ciders. And while I have not cut out the ciders, uh, because I still have them in the house and I'm not going to throw them out, uh, I have cut out the energy drinks and it sucks and I don't like it. But I have got, oh man, you guys are going to make fun of me for it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I don't give a fuck. So uh, I've gone back to my old, my old, old habit back when you first met me, Noah. I'm starting drinking G Fuel again. My uh, my one coworker drinks G Fuel. It's uh, caffeine, but it's not an energy drink, which is literally all I need. It's that, or I start isn't going it, gas, getting still caffeine have, pills. Doesn't it still have fake sugar, sugar, which would be the carbs compared to a sugar free Red Bull? No. That's why you just have Those to drink are, the regular sugar Red Bull. I uh, yeah, that's the life. You're not supposed to do that either. Actually, my doctor did say you should. I should be doing that because it it messes with whatever. Uh, yeah, it's not. That's one of those like. I like. I mean, obviously, everyone knows it, but like drinking sugar-free things because you're like, I gotta cut down on the calories. It does not. Does it doesn't work? It's never worked. It's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Just drink some things that don't have carbs or calories in them naturally. There is nothing like I something or something that's unsweetened. That is unsweetened, but still has caffeine. What? There's well, nothing. learn to like take some. Have you ever tried yerba mate? Oh, I love I'm yerba sorry. mate. Oh, I've dude, it's it's a hyper caffeinated black tea. Ooh. It's well, it's not a black tea. It's a separate plant. It's it's tea adjacent, basically, but okay. it's not a normal tea. So it, you might actually like it. I might. Can you send me the um, name of it? I will look into it. If nothing else. Yeah, yeah I, it's a South American drink. Uh, mm-hmm. It's pretty popular. It's it's kind of one of those things that's growing in popularity because people are realizing the, like you know like the group that used to be like if I said it's big in the kombucha circles, you would know exactly who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Not really a relevant yeah. like example anymore, but like. It used to be, and that's what matters. 
it's definitely big and like if people people who drink kombucha definitely like yerba mate yeah um because it, it does have some health benefits to it but it's also one of those things where like you like it because it makes you sound like you're you know a little Refined. more world wise yeah. like i don't drink that coffee i like yerba mate i'm like you can you can like both also they like half the time that's just grown in the same place like it's not like you're more like it, you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's depth to all sorts of things i'm uh I'm also now is the time to if you don't want to drink if you want caffeine but you don't want the sugar and or fake sugar you, you can always force yourself to start liking something like black coffee uh i have tried multiple times no you you've been around me long enough to know that this is a thing that has happened Probably, I think it happens about every other year at this point. Yeah, yeah. he he does really try. I have Give I have tried shot so many times, and every time it makes me want to die. Um, black tea, I've gotten more into. Oh my god, uh, I didn't tell you guys. So we went out to the Asian market uh, maybe two, three weeks ago now, and we got a big ass thing of boba, and we've been making homemade boba tea, and it fucks. Like I know it's like literally not that deep and it's literally not that hard but we haven't done it before and uh the amount of money we used to spend on boba tea is now uh being put into different kinds of like various jams and shit to put in our boba and it's great that does sound nice i'll give you that it's 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 super nice um yeah i don't know i i try i've tried black tea like just plain black tea and i tried plain black coffee and neither are ideal for me so i'm i'm seeking alternate solutions right now g fuel is my go-to although if you guys send me this thing try your mate also try like different kinds of tea i've tried i i like green tea a little more than more than black and i agree yeah, you know do some, some do caffeine. some uh little red tea little green tea little oolong tea white tea i'm not a huge oolong dan know, i'm uh, sending uh, you a really like assholish google search link but that's not not because shit. i'm like this man doesn't know how to, know how to google um, I figured that firstly, but also, uh, all I know are like the canned versions. I haven't tried Hello. to like, brew any of my own yet. I yeah, you am... can get like a uh, little chunks of it. Mm-hmm. It looks a little bit like weed. It looks yeah, it very much like weed. I'm not gonna lie to you. Lucky Catch for me at you, the function with a bag, <laughs> smoking that yerba mate pack. Oh, I always forget that that's the tea that's served with the metal like filter straw. Yeah, they got the weird filter straw, and you put it in like the gourd. <laughs> I, I love that. That's some that's some hipster bullshit, is what that is. It, it, no, that's, it's that's not what hipster I'm bullshit. It's, it's, it's literally exact, traditional. It, it's it's the literally the tradition. <laughs> Guys, it's literally a traditional way of consuming the beverage in South America. Yeah, I, no, I, that's I how they've that. done it for hundred of years. No, a hundred percent. Do we live in Do we live in South that America? Well, it's over here. I don't think so. That's that's I mean, what I'm saying. Kind is it's, of, but, it's a special well, way to drink a drink. It's like the people who are super into matcha. But like you get the uh, the the wooden whisk and everything like that, so you go like Which, the whole way rather than yeah yeah. I like green you tea. You should. You should no, but that's the thing. It is objectively better, but it will also still trigger those old feelings in my mind of oh, they're doing well, it that way. I Even though I, there's I, a I, big part of me I, that is jealous that I can't do it that way. I, I, well, I also think when it comes to things like someone else's culture, it's not bad to be like, hey, this is how you guys have been doing it for hundreds of years. I'm going to like try and respect that and try and consume the beverage in the way that you have been uh, because that's no, no. what's done. I, I, no, I, agree. Agree. I very much agree. Uh-huh. But there yeah. is a difference between doing it respectfully and doing it and because doing it it's special. Um, it's the right way. Yeah, exactly. It's it's very different. I mean, I guess I, it's a thin line. It depends on the way someone says it. But yes, that's that's my I, I think I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt on that one and assume it's just because that's like, you know, how you drink it you, or how it's drank traditionally. So like it's what they do because it's what's given. Same with like the matcha wooden whisk. Like it just actually works the best. Oh, without a doubt. I it's actually same, have been. I mean, I feel like it's the same thing with people who will only ever drink Moscow mules out of copper. Like, yes, that's the, the air quotes correct way to do it. But like, it, is it really going to change that much if you don't? Have I mean, copper? I don't know if it's quite the same because the Moscow mule thing was started because the person who owned the bar in which the cocktail became famous also owned a copper making thing. And that was just something they decided to say. It has no yeah. actual like value to it, nor is it even Russian. People think it's, it's not like aerating your child. I think it's it actually Wait, what? I don't think it's actually Russian. Well, no, I'm just saying like it, it's not like an intercultural thing that has like any kind of roots. It's just like someone had a bar and also made like had a plant where they made copper like containers. Sure. So they they were like, we're going to profit off this. Whereas like the Yerba Mate, they're like, yeah, this, we got the gourds for this shit. We got the little uh, 
slurpy straws. So you because you you steep the tea in the cup basically loose, and mm-hmm. then you just drink the straw the is your filter pack. Yeah, yeah, so it yeah, actually yeah. like that's that's it's uh it all serves a purpose. CBD infused yerba mate. Oh my gosh, you you can drink your weed tea. Holy shit! You guys ever seen the movie Grandma's Boy? No. Good. Uh, it's not a good movie, but I remember watching it when I was like thirteen and being like, "This is funny." Uh, but anyway, there's a scene in which uh, the like main character has like his weed hidden in like some like dish on the mantle, and then his grandma thinks it's tea and drinks it. Classic. And the gra- grandma drinks the weed tea, and okay. uh, when you're thirteen, that's that's the funniest shit. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, we did doubt. see. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, not to drastically change our topic back to mugs. No, um, I guess we've been talking about drinking vessels a lot today, so it's it's actually more Fuck on it, topic I'm buying than I thought. Fucking, I'm buying a hundred dollar yerba mate gourd. Um, I don't know that there's any single sound that I like as much as like glass coming out of a kiln. You know the sound I'm talking about? I don't know that I do. Does it sound so like picking up XP in Minecraft? Uh, <sighs> yeah, it's similar. <laughs> Why would Woo. you do that to me? He's you right. may have single-handedly ruined one of my favorite sounds. I'm impressed, but, honestly. That was that was quick. Fuck. Yeah, that sound. That like no, really. No, it's good. Like, I like it. It's a, it's a really delicate like too. glass cracking tinkling noise. Yeah. That as the glass gets hit by the cold, relatively cold air of outside of the kiln, it's just really neat. I want to meet the first the uh, guy who was like, you know what I'm making glass <laughs> like i want to meet that i want to meet that human being that that man or woman from ancient times who was like yo okay hear me out i got this hollow stick i'm about to invent glass blowing because <laughs> like what if what a mad individual that it must have been who was like i'm gonna just start blowing glass i'm gonna i'm gonna inflate this molten rock into like a little balloon that I'm then going to cool down and we're going to we're going to have it's just insane. Love it. Wouldn't that be neat to get into th- glass blowing? Yes, 100 percent. I uh, I've generally talked about this before, but I, I am super, super into uh, glass blowing and like old school metalworking. It's, I, it's uh, high key like my personal like retirement goal. Like I'm going to retire and I'm going to just stick around with that. I know a guy who, uh, for a living, blows bongs. He, like, makes bongs in Texas. That's amazing. In Texas? Yeah. Okay. The bong maker. I was really hoping you were about to say it was a guy in Erie, and I was just wondering if it was a guy that I no. knew. No, I know a guy who, like, he, like, lives in, like, a little trailer in, like, the kind of middle of nowhere in, in Texas and just makes bongs. He yeah, has cool. mutual friends. Yeah. He's a goofy guy, but, like, pretty nice. I don't know him too well, but pretty cool. I know I'll never do it. But there's like, there's a lot to it that just does sound like a good time. I oh, agree. Yeah. I think any oh, kind yeah. of like metalworking is just like, there's just an element to it where it's like, this is fun. like making things is just fun, you know, like jewelry yeah. making, uh, metalworking, you know, actual like blacksmithing, glass blowing. They're all like, they're kind of like hands on activities that you're like, this is, you know, at the end of the day, I've got something like, like ceramics even. You're like, yeah, I made a bowl. Mm-hmm. You're like wood turning is another one of those. Like anything where at the end of it, you're like, yeah. I made a thing that I can just use or other people can use. There, there is a satisfaction in stepping away from something you've created and being like, yes, I made this. This is me. And mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like a lot of people probably don't get to experience that as much as they wish they did. Yeah, I can oh, definitely see that. I mean, that's one of the fun things I like about roasting coffee is like, you know, at the end of the day, you made something that was unusable and inedible into a product that uh, is cool and it can be enjoyed. It's how Michelle feels about cooking. I know that. It's just a really neat thing to be able to do. I yeah. I would like, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that I would like to get into in that world. Like wood carving was something that always interested me a little bit, but not enough to actually get any of the tools to like make it happen because it's a big first commitment. If I do wood carving, I will unironically slice a finger off. Yeah. Like there's an uh, literally a hundred percent chance that that would happen. Well, a lot of time, like a lot of wood, uh, I'm not carving, but like if you do a lot of the oh stuff, wood, a lot of it's wood turning. So you just have like a lathe and you just like, yeah, lathes. 
Latents are, I, I, they, obviously, there's still a danger factor involved, but, like... Oh, yeah. Well, and a lot of that, like, like the big saw... Like, people who do, like, big, like, carpentry work, that stuff mm -hmm. is surprisingly, like, safer now uh, with, like, all the emergency stops and stuff that they have set up for. Like, it yeah. is... Have you seen those? The things that, like, will absolutely just hard stop your blade in, a, if, in an instant? It, like, takes, like, a fraction of a microsecond to stop the blade? Yeah. Like, a mm -hmm. table saw? Super cool. I, it trashes I don't know your why. entire table saw, but Tra well, trashes no, it your really blade. just trashes the blade. Yeah, like yeah, it trashes your blade, but the rest of you is fine. I, you guys just reminded me. I totally had forgotten that I used to do like small scale woodworking in my parents' basement. It's fun. I, I don't know how I'd forgotten that. With like um, not a, it's not a table saw. It's the it's the one that uses like really thin blades, but it's still me mechanized. Um. Like a jigsaw, maybe? Yeah, jigsaws. That's what it was. I used to work with my... I I do actually know how to use a jigsaw. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I, I've, I've done some stuff with it before. I think it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of, like, really... like It's really cathartic in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Reciprocating saw. That's the specific term for that kind of saw. But mine oh, was a big-ass yes. big table for it. Like, it was a whole-ass table that was, like, very exact. Yeah, uh, one of one of Mari's moms actually does a uh, does a lot of woodworking. Uh, give me a second. I got it. I wanted to get something. Okay. Um, and uh, for Christmas she made me a pen. Oh, nice. That's awesome. That's really, so I'm really gonna, cool. I'm gonna send a photo of it here. It's pretty sick. It's a uh, definitely like one of the cooler presents I've gotten. It was and, a reciprocating uh, table saw. That's literally what it's called. The more you know. I want to see this. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting a, I'm get, I'm getting a photograph. A photograph. You didn't get photograph. You know, I. While we're talking. Yeah, about it's it. really cool. It's made with a like a spalted elm, and it's a, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I'm, a, I'm a fountain pen guy. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I've got, got several. I, I enjoy them. I just think they're, they're cool looking. They're fun to write with. Like they're just, you know, all around a good time. All right. There's a photo. Putting this in the Discord. Um, yeah, it's this is one of the coolest like gifts I've gotten in a long time because it's just like it's so personalized and also like cool that someone just made this. That is rad. Yeah, it's I like love that it's real sick as hell. I that love the use hell. of two different woods so you get two different mm -hmm. grains going on. The initially it was all gonna be one type of uh, wood, but the the spalted elm was too small. To mm. be made into both, so I think gotcha. it's an elm and a maple. But it's oh, also nice, great. yeah, to have the two different grains. To, yeah, I, I, it's really cool. She made she made one for pretty much like everybody, just as like a Christmas gift, which is one of those like life hacks where it's like if you're good at doing something like woodworking or like blacksmithing or glass blowing, like just make everybody something you for like Christmas, and it costs you like pretty much nothing. Or, like, relatively not as much as it would otherwise. And everyone who gets something is like, holy shit, this is the coolest thing I've ever gotten. It's, like, the biggest win-win. Not to mention the fact that you're also, like, hand-making something for someone, which just, like, that shows a lot of a lot of care. Yeah. No, it's a very, like, you thought of me specifically. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's super cool. It's very nice. Yeah, she made everybody pens. She made her uh, brother-in-law a pen with a tree that had fallen down in the backyard of the home he grew up in as a kid. Aww. Oh, I was like, that's like the, that's like the, the coolest like way to repurpose something like that. Mm -hmm. That is really neat. Did, yeah. Did you get anything it's... rad for Christmas, Noah? Yeah, I got, I got this, uh, you're not allowed to laugh at the name because I know you're gonna because no. you're a piece I'm of shit. Hold, I'll hold it, I'll hold it in. It's the Electro Harmonics uh, Big Muff. It is a bass fuzz pedal. God, dude. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's what it's called. It's a big green uh, stomp box that makes my bass super distorted. Like they had to call it that? I want it on record. I'm very proud of you, Dan. You, you held it together, and I appreciate that. But no, it's sick. I'm really excited to do some stuff with it. Um, yeah, what kind of stuff you can do with the big muff? <laughs> I now see I was worried about not the wrong person, but... Half of the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, it makes no, you feel any better. Even if you would have asked me not to, I still would have. Yeah, I know, I know. I don't know. It's it's a very it's a very neat sound it has. It's very um overdriven and just crunchy. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, but it's 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 good. 
and I'm very excited to like check it out more. That sounds very so. Cool. I don't know. That sounds very very cool. You know what else is cool? Taking care of what? leather things. That's right. I'm gonna become a shoe guy. I That's... think leather working is also one of those things. You know, it's leather like, put working that in the is camp. in that same category. Yeah. Mm hmm. Honestly, I... if it's got working, it's there. Yeah. That's fair. Um, I'm going to become a shoe guy in the year 2022. I'm going to get one pair at least of nice shoes. They're very expensive, so I'm probably just going to do one right now. Um, but I have leather boots that I can actually like take care of now because they're real and not, you know, plastic leather. Are they um, for uh, for work? Uh, the shoes I'm going to get. Yeah, uh, the boots are just my daily wear. It is kind of like like I was annoyed when I started working at the liquor store and they're like, you got to wear dress shoes. But at the same time, it's kind of nice to wear dress shoes. See, well, I definitely good, like, did not dress wear nice. dress shoes. Uh, I'm wearing black Vans and no one noticed or no one cares. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I don't think most people do. I, no one else where I work does. But like they had just mentioned to me to me before. So I did. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do try to, though. So. It's a good thing to keep up with if you can, you know. But yeah, I've, I've decided I found uh, a website. It's the website that they are the guys that used to make Doc Martens before Doc Martens outsourced. Um, so I guess their new shoes don't hold up as well as their old shoes used to. Um, but yeah, the guys that made the ones that people are like, yeah, these shoes have lasted me for 30 years. Uh, they still exist. So I'm going to be buying some stuff from them. And to prep for that, I decided to start taking care of my boots. And that's what I did today. And they look so nice. I that's literally awesome. all I did was clean them and condition the leather a little bit because Honestly. I can't like I don't have a wax for it. And because of the I, I don't know what Gore-Tex lining is, but I think it helps the shoe breathe better. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I can't use beeswax on that. So rather than. Uh, go out of my way to get a second type of wax at the moment to help waterproof it. I'm just going to clean it and worry about the waterproofing later. But sorry, go ahead. No, I feel like that's all, that's like such an e like take like just cleaning your shoes. I feel like always makes such a di massive difference that you don't notice until you do it. Oh, it's such a great way to make you feel like world's better about yourself. Mm hmm. It took like, me it like, I mean, it doesn't good. take long. Blue suede no, yeah. shoes, you know, he was right. He yeah. had something. It, it took me maybe 40 minutes to do from start to finish and that's because there was like 10 minutes after I did the water clean and 20 minutes after I did the uh the leather clean that I just like let it sit and dry you know like that's what took so long it <laughs> otherwise was no time at all to just clean things off I got new laces yeah. it's like it's gonna look fresh I'm excited I don't know it's nice to uh I don't know it, it feels like such like when I say selfish, I don't mean like something I shouldn't be doing, but it feels like just a nice selfish thing to do for myself. Yeah, no, that, I hear what you mean. You know what I mean? It's not like in a because I feel like a lot of times when people say selfish, it's at the uh, it means that you're doing something at the harm of others, you know, mm -hmm. but and that's not it, what this is. But it was just something for it's me. It's just a thing I, for I yourself. Like yeah. For me. Yeah. I took the time to clean my shoes. I had to break out my Honestly? old space heater from Corey again to heat them up because they are very cold. And it just works better if the leather is warm. Hmm. But boy, howdy, dude. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, my God. That's that's amazing. I, I, I feel like I either never get like really good quality shoes or I just I abuse my shoes a lot. Uh, every pair of shoes I've ever owned, and this isn't an exaggeration, the back heel of my like where my ankle and heel go 100 percent of the time wears out. Mm hmm. Uh. And part of that, I'm sure, is shoe quality, right? But I'm sure also part of that is something else. Uh, and so I don't own any shoe. I don't even own like a really nice pair of shoes anymore. I would have to go get new ones to if I had something going on. It's bad. I yeah. wear out all my shoes. I know that feeling. The the steel toe boots I used to buy. Um, I got them from Walmart. I got them like every year and a half or two years is when they would wear out. And then I'd get a new one. And I would crack holes right through those things. It was actually uh, really rough. <laughs> I, I didn't realize how much better, like, um, even canvas shoes hold up better than those plastic boots. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, like, leather shoes, holy shit, they hold up like crazy. It's fantastic. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah there's a whole lot of happy to be here uh, going on, you know? Dude, 
I, I don't know about you guys, but besides the whole, you know, the world is a nightmare sometimes, Wing Wing is going, going pretty okay so far. I am yeah. definitely actively doing what I can to make my perception of it be better than maybe in the past. Yeah, that, that's me too. I get that. You guys want to hear a cool story? I'd love to. No. It's a wholesome story. It's just a, it's just a little one. Um, yeah. But I was just thinking about it because this is on my desk. Um, so I, on my desk, I have a beanie baby from when I was a little child. Um, it, is a, it is a red bull, and its name is Snort. Um, I've had it since I was like a, a literally an infant. I think it's the, the sickest animal ever. It's one of the only beanie babies I still have. It was always like one of my favorites. And I always had it with me growing up, brought it places. It's dirty, beaten up, a little bit ragged. Um, do you know how much in mint condition Snort goes for? No. At least $8,000. Holy shit. I, I just found that out recently. That like, because apparently like the mint condition ones, there's like a typo on the tags. And so people pay a ton of money for it. Mm -hmm. um, which is just crazy to me. But also, I don't know. I just think it's funny to think that like, if I had never had like played with this as a kid and just been put in a bag somewhere, it would be worth a lot of money. But like, I don't know. I'm happy that I did because mm -hmm. I got a lot of fond memories with this little Red Bull. That's the sucky thing about collectible toys, right? When you see it in the future, and you're like, I definitely could have given up all the happiness I got from this in exchange for. Maybe... Could have, but I don't think I don't think I would have, you know? No, it, right. It's definitely not worth it. Just because when I was a little kid, I couldn't say his name because I couldn't pronounce my S's. So I just called him Nort. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, but yeah, I found out recently that it's worth a whole way. Not the one I have, but I mean, the one I have is still worth like surprisingly more than it should be. But like the new ones are worth a ton of money because they also apparently discontinued the, the red one. Weird. It's almost Which like they why, did it on it, purpose. Yeah, this stuffed animal sick as hell. Drive the price up for their personal collectors. Although also buying an $8,000 stuffed animal is uh, just like a slightly better version of buying an NFT. Like, it's only worth that much because you convince you like someone convinced you to pay that much for it. Yeah, I feel like that's true. It's like it's not it's no different than any other, you know, stuffed animal. It's just rarer. So I suppose there's some value in rarity to collectors. But like, come on, there's got to be some upper bounds. we got to place some upper bounds out here. That's the issue looking at any kind of like just basically any kind of collectible, right? Like. Like Eventually, baseball cards. Oh my gosh. I don't I don't get it. Like this is I worth really five thousand dollars. Be like, honestly, it's not worth anything to me. <laughs> I uh don't care. That's the best part. Is just if you give it to me, I'll like, se I'll me, sell it for cash to someone who's dumb enough to buy it off me. But like, I don't care. Mm hmm Yeah, that's that's just like my my general thoughts on collectibles anyway. Like at the end of the day, it's just like people will be like, it's worth this much. I'm like, is it? It just makes me think of like Funko Pops and stuff, like I know no. that some people pay for them, right? Uh, yeah, they're not. Funko Pops like, are, are like the pinnacle of like that, like NFT-esque. Like all you've done is just purchase something for money that no one wants, but you're to keep really set telling yourself has value. See, I, I like some. I have a couple sitting on my desk right now. I have a uh, yeah. Rob Zombie and a Pinhead, but they're not in their box. Right. They're just sitting and, out and here you on don't... display because you know what? They're they're display toys. And you're not valuing them as collectibles, and you're not like, no. yes, this this My Hero Academia Funko Pop will sell for four hundred dollars one day. I know it will. Now this My Hero Academia Shigaraki figure that I have sitting next to them. Now that oh, no, he has a My Hero Academia <laughs> one. This Post Malone prayer candle that I bought mass produced off of Etsy. That's gonna. That's my retirement fund. That's popping off. Yeah. So you guys make any good food recently? Jackson, I know you're you're cooking right now, aren't you? Yeah, I got some wonton soup uh, simmering on the stove. Very nice. Very nice. You know, I got some uh, I got some frozen. They're called like Chesapeake style shrimp flatbreads from Wegman or from uh, not Wegmans from Sam's Club. And they're actually really good. They're like mini flatbreads with like a uh, like a cra like a shrimp cake kind of on them. Ooh, yeah, they're, they're really good. Sounds fun for like a little Michelle. frozen thing to heat up. It's a good time. Michelle and I made eight pounders of ribs over the weekend. Ooh. That fucked. Sounds like a lot of ribs. It was so many ribs. We have so, so, like, actually, it was an upsettingly large amount of ribs. Like, we had Did you have, like, a party? Eating. Yeah, we had literally one, one set of people over. Like, that was it. Like, we had, <laughs> oh, we no. had a couple. We had two other people and then us. And so, between, the, between us. Well, that's just two pounds of ribs per person. You can knock back two pounds of pork. 
exactly exactly and no, sides. We, we yeah it's oh my god we had so many sides uh no we were like oh we're never gonna make these unless we have somebody over i know we'll have some of our friends who live nearby over and that'll do it could could you have maybe made four pounds of ribs no because they were all they were not individually wrapped like it was it was eight pounds of ribs in the form of three racks that were like in one container uh and we tried originally when we first got them to separate them but we would have had to completely thaw them to get them uh, apart. oh i see and yeah they were they were like they were like again. stuck together yeah they were stuck yeah, okay. uh, so it was a it was a all or nothing kind of deal and so now i have just an ass load of ribs in the fridge uh on the bright side guess who's having rib sandwiches all weekend probably that you. sounds good mm-hmm. i'm here for it we um, made um Speaking of um, frighteningly large amounts of pork, that's what I'm making right now. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we uh, we so the other day, uh, as as I've told you, uh, my thing has been just like cooking whole chickens recently because it's fun and cheap and feeds you for days. Right. Um, but mm-hmm. what I've been doing is I've been doing just kind of like a general like chicken spice action going on. And I'm like, Nina, what do you want me to do with it this time? We've done lemon pepper. We've done uh, garlic herb butter. And she's like, I want to do Cajun. And I'm like, okay, let's let's look me up some Cajun like seasoning blend and we'll do something with it. And we we did that. And it's y'all. It was so good. Um, Cajun seasoning is the best. Cajun seasoning is really good. Yeah, because I feel like when people think of Cajun seasoning, they incorrectly just think of like heat. Um, I didn't no. even think of the fact that there's like so many herbs in that. Oh yeah, so many yeah. herbs and salt, and honestly, not really any heat. Like I guess yeah, a little I don't, bit. I don't think of heat when I think of Cajun. Spicing, I think of the spices. herbs and salt. Yeah, oh, God. like Cajun, the like Cajun, uh, like wings. Uh, ideal. Mm-hmm. And Is, oh, I, I, I can't tell you how much I absolutely adored this chicken. So we decided, hey, let's do it again. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. as you do. But very, very sad news. Um, Walmart was out of chicken. Like there were no full yeah. chickens. That sounds and about I, right. And you know, I didn't really feel like buying chicken bits. Uh, so we decided, well, let's 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 step our game up. So we got a pork butt to do the same thing, and it's mm-hmm. been cooking for the last four hours on low heat. That sounds sick. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited! It's the same Cajun rub that we did. It had like a really big fat cap to it, so we have that scored and exposed to heat right now, and it's gonna be done when I finish recording. And I'm I'm just so excited. That sounds like really fun. That's I, amazing. You know, you guys like uh, you guys like Cajun wings, right? Oh yeah, without a doubt. I, do you like lemon pepper wings? Every time. You ever it's had lemon find... pepper wet? I knew you were about to say lemon pepper wet. It's divine. I'm sorry? You ever had Cajun wet? I have not. What is it? So what is, good. What is this? It's wet? like Cajun it's wet, wet is the same as like dry sauce. Yeah, it's like they like somehow they take the exact taste and feel of like the dry. I think I I don't know for sure. It's got to just be butter, right? Um, I think butter is your usual go to like like for like lemon pepper wet and like Cajun wet, like as opposed to like, you know, dry like they typically come. I think they just take a shitload of the seasoning and put it in butter. I wouldn't be surprised. Like it's like I, I can't think of another way that they could get it so like good and also so true to the flavor. But yeah, Cajun wet is a it's a rarity. You don't see it usually, but I've mm-hmm. had it a couple times in my life and it just blows me out of the water. It's like it's like lemon pepper wet where it's just like, damn, they, this should be the normal, but it's not. Although I will say I do really like dry wings if they're crunchy. I do, too. I, I love a good dry wing. I think a lot of people get mad at the dry wings. I would take any dry wing over a barbecue wing 10 times out of 10. Mm-hmm. Not because I think dry barbecue wings are bad. I think they're pretty good. But like, it's just I've, it's been done. I've had it. You yeah. know, whereas I feel like oh, the dry yeah, wings, that. they're trying a little more. They're trying something. And the barbecue just overwhelms so much so often. Yeah, uh, I honestly, like, I got to be honest. Barbecue is, in my opinion, probably the weakest wing sauce. I, I think I can agree with I you. Agree Honey with barbecue yeah, is probably my weakest wing and sauce. What was that, Dan? I, I 100% agree. Yeah, barbecue. If I have bar- barbecue wings, are the most disappointing kind of wings. There's yeah. some Which barbecue sauces because that I'd be happy with. Yeah, but like just plain barbecue sauce is me. Yeah, it's just like it's kind of like eh, you know. It's it's 
the chicken wings are amazing because the sauce is good and then like you get into the chicken and the chicken also tastes amazing but their barbecue sauce just smothers the chicken too much like sometimes you just can't get that crispy skin you can't really like feel the crispiness you can't feel the juiciness of the like the chicken as you get in there so like sometimes the barbecue just becomes too much of the main focus mm-hmm. where it shouldn't be now like barbecue pulled pork amazing but oh, it's just it's just a matter but it's, it's a how thinner you sauce it. even too yeah. usually you know it's it's not it's not the same not i love a good carolina all. barbecue you know like that mustard based barbecue Ooh. i haven't had a good mustard based barbecue yet Ooh, i i love a good like carolina barbecue where it's like the the, the mustard and it's like a mustardy vinegary barbecue sauce mm-hmm. it's high up there on my list of things i want to have at some point when um, i first any of those vinegar to sauces Texas. are really good though it's I, nice. First of it all, helps stand up to the richness of a like the pulled pork. Yeah, it's great. I don't like Texas barbecue that much. I think it's the most overrated barbecue. Yeah. Um, and this is I lived in Texas for like ever. I tried so many different kinds, and I'm just like, why am I paying fifteen bucks for something that's not that good at a minimum? Like fifteen bucks at a minimum for something that I'm like, eh, it's just expensive and not that good. But like Carolina barbecue, usually it's gonna be like a like a pulled pork sandwich with like some slaw smothered in like a vinegary mustardy sauce i'm like this is just a really good uh the first time i moved to texas when when my mom and i drove down we like packed up the car and uh they uh we we went through i think it was tennessee but for whatever reason we stopped at like this like famous place for carolina barbecue and it was like one of the best barbecue sandwiches i've ever had in my life so that's something i really would love to visit like any of the places obviously you know things are never going to be the same as they imply on tv blah 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 blah. get out of my face true, true, true. i really want to visit like any of the places that were ever featured on like diners drive-ins and dives and that's what the first thing i thought of when you said famous that's, barbecue that, no, that it, was it. it it was yeah no that's how my mom knew about it it nice. was in memphis it had been on diners drive-ins and dives classic and it was really good the uh yeah man although i will say i think people I, I, I'm a known brisket hater when it comes to smoked foods. This is known. Um, this is known. But when it comes to barbecue, I, I think I might be the only one brave enough to say it. The sausages are always the best part. I would love to try sausage from a barbecue because I, I see them and they look like the best thing I've ever had they're in my so life. so good. Yeah, if I, if I go to but a barbecue I, place and get like a two meat platter. Not here. Yeah, if I get like a two meat platter at a, at a barbecue place, I usually get like uh, sausage and honestly i get turkey a lot of the time people sleep on barbecue turkey i don't think it's the best but i, I don't always go sausage and pulled pork because then you just eat you know it's just a lot of only pork i like to mix it up get a mm-hmm. second kind of meat uh so if i get two meats i usually get like sausage and turkey turkey definitely does seem like a bit of a sleeper hit i would never have yeah, actually thought bar- of having barbecue turkey. turkey is pretty good especially if the place you're at has because usually most barbecue places will have like a couple sauces they do and most of them usually have like one that's like a fruitier sauce mm-hmm and like if you get like a mango habanero sauce or like a like a cranberry kind of sauce and you get like the turkey, it's really mm. good with those fruity, fruity barbecue sauces. Turkey just pairs good with fruit things. It does. And I feel like, yeah, there's a uh, that's that's my um, that's my barbecue tips. That's man. I love I love barbecue. Let's, let's, let's go get barbecue sometime off the air takes barbecue. I don't know. I which one it's always us call. taking something. Yeah, we're like, it's like, well, I think, honestly, it's just because the Muppets took Manhattan, and I don't want to let them continually upstage us. They can't. They can't. They do, but we can't uh, keep... they do, them. though. We gotta, yeah, we gotta no, work I... on it. We gotta take things, too. That's what I'm saying, is we can't just let them. Yeah, we can't just take it sitting down. Aaron Paul voice, they can't keep getting away with this. They can't keep getting away with it. You guys I like Breaking Bad? I, I love no. Breaking Bad so much. I like Breaking Bad. I can't watch it, though. Like I that. tried. I I I have I am like midway through the third season, and I've been watching the show for five years. Wait, once so you month, never finished it? Nah, once a month or so I'll watch an episode, and then every time the episode ends, I'm like, eh, I'm good. Then I do something else for a month. I guess. I, and I don't. I I think it's just because like the show is so like tense and dramatic, and also like it it does the thing where like, and this isn't a bad thing. The show is very well done, but it does the thing mm. where you're like, oh shit. I know what's about to happen, but Walter doesn't. And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do this all day. I can't lie to Walter all day. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, Walter lies to you all day. Oh, uh, he doesn't lie to me. He lies oh, to his wife. 
Lies to his kids, lies to everybody around him. I see. I know what's going on with Walter. Fuck this ass. This dude watches Breaking Bad. Yeah. But yeah, I, and like, I think shows that are kind of like tense like that, but the ones that let you in on the tension where you're like, oh shit, this guy's up to no good, and you know it, and you just have to watch it unfold. I'm like, ah, it scares me. No, it doesn't scare me. It's just like a little too tense. I'm like, I'm going to take a, take a breather from that one. No, I, I get that. The show can be a lot to sit through sometimes. Especially as the seasons went on. It's just a lot. It's very good. But it can be yeah, a lot. Yeah, very good. But yeah, I, I have a tough time sitting through it for more than like an hour. Yeah, not a mood. It's um a show that I love enough that it was like my white noise show for a little while. I could not imagine that, but more power to you. Yeah, well, I mean, it's because I know it enough. It's hard for me to watch things that I like don't know. Like, I was doing Seinfeld for a bit, but that was getting frustrating because it's like, okay. Yeah, it's not a white like noise this. show if you've never watched it, yeah. I exactly. If I had watched it before, I think it would have been perfect at it, but I had not, so it was not. That's fair. I think this is probably a good point to wrap up. I know you were about to say that before I said the Breaking Bad thing. Probably. But I was also <laughs> going to ask just... Dan what he wants to take while we're out taking stuff. Oh, yeah. A life. OTA takes a life is uh I'm sorry Dan that's not going to be part of our great event. Where did I go wrong? I lost a friend. How to take a life? <laughs> <laughs> that was I was really wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah, I realized Whoa. that the part I had started off, I was like, man, I'm gonna have to sing for like 12 seconds before I get to the punchline. So I just stopped and then just said the punchline. That Thank that's you. the way to do it though, right? comedy what do i want to take if we're gonna uh, i don't know i don't know what would be a good like event or place well right now we're going to get barbecue we gotta go so to the can tie gathering in of the juggalos. barbecue that would be ideal like we just actually do have to go to the gathering of the juggalos next time they have it well and we it's, also it's talk, really talk starting to feel like that right okay so we need so you have you know those people that live in riverboats on tiktok have you seen that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to become the TikTok riverboat people, but we're going to boat down the bayou. And I know that's not where the California, where the uh, Carolina barbecue is, but bear with me. <laughs> we're going to bayou mean, boat to the barbecue and gathering of the Juggalos. Thoughts? Yeah. There sure. we go. That's the big yeah, plan I mean, in 2022. I'll buy, you boat to, I'll buy you boat to the gathering. Yeah. Uh, although I, mean, I am actually not joking at all when I say that I genuinely want us to go to the Gathering of the Juggalos. No, I, I also actually would think that that's probably a good time. I think I would hate it, but I think I would at least go to. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for Dan to get like. Friends. I can't wait for Dan to get just like. Just way too into Juggalos. Domed. No, just domed with a can of Diet Dr. Fago for <laughs> kind of being a poser. <laughs> Like, I, I can't wait to just I'm get not, like. Is it a poser if I don't even like pretend to? That's true. That's true. I, yeah, you're not even pretending. I'm full on coming like... in as like an outsider. I think that's the wait. problem, right? Is how much are you trying to like be? I'm not actually a juggalo, but I'm here because I think yeah. that would be your problem. I, feel, I can't wait I for like a can I... of rock and ride to just shatter against my spine. See, and that just sounds like <laughs> the worst time. But then they sell you hard drugs to make up for it, Dan. Come on, keep up. I do like hard drugs. We just gotta have like a little booth set up. A little booth! Like recording. We're done. We got it done. Yeah, yeah we gotta get out of here. That's it.